Bibliophiles of the internet, my name's Adriana and today I'm here to bring you my third quarter book haul. Notice I didn't call this my huge fall book haul, my out of control September book haul, my end of the summer book haul, and that's because I just realized I've unconsciously been making collective hauls every three months and this one covers everything from early July to end of September. And not gonna lie, these piles over here are somewhat ridiculous. With that in mind, if I've read and reviewed any of these books in prior videos, I'm just gonna kind of gloss over them, I don't want to summarize them again, same goes for books I will review in the near future and for everything else I just hope to keep the synopses brief. The first book I have to show you is Raven Stratagem by Yoon Ha Lee. This is the incredible sequel to Nine Fox Gambit. I talked about it at length in my June wrap up and I just want to say that Yoon Ha Lee is an immense talent who everyone should read and support. Of course, it was around the end of June that I finally finished my huge Avatar and Legend of Korra binge, and naturally I bought the first three comics in this first Avatar story, The Promise. I actually just talked about these in my Get Graphic announcement and TBR, which I will link down below in case you want to join because that is happening this upcoming weekend, but these are a canon continuation of the show and they are a collaboration between the creators of Avatar and Jean Luen Yang, who has my heart. To give you a better look at the covers, this is part one, part two, and part three. As you may recall, end of June, early July, I did some traveling and we went to so many used bookstores and indie bookstores. I touched so many books, let me tell you, but the only one I came home with was this used yet practically new edition of The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This is middle grade fantasy. It's about this village called the Protectorate and there's a witch living in the forest nearby and they believe her to be evil. So they think that if every year they leave a newborn child as an offering in in the forest, she will leave them in peace. What they don't know is that she's actually good and every year when she sees these abandoned children she rescues them and journeys with them to a village on the other side of the forest where they can grow up with loving families and she nourishes them with starlight. However, one year she accidentally gives the child moonlight instead of starlight which could potentially unleash some very dangerous magic. Then when I came home from my travels I had a lot of book mail waiting for me and one of those books was When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Manan. This is Own Voices YA Contemporary Romance. It's about a character named Dimple who I believe is going to a summer coding program at a university and her parents think this is the perfect time to secretly send along the guy they want to be her future husband so the two of them can organically meet. And with a foolproof plan like that I'm sure nothing could possibly go wrong. I also came home to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This is definitely one of my new favorite books. I talked about it a lot in my August wrap-up. It's queer YA historical fiction. Do yourself a favor and read this, listen to the audiobook, and let some joy into your life. In my August wrap-up I also talked about The Many Worlds of Albie Bright by Christopher Edge. This is middle grade sci-fi speculative fiction about a young boy whose mother passes away and then he becomes determined to travel to parallel worlds where they can maybe be together again. And the last book awaiting me at home was Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This is one I actually discovered while I was traveling but I didn't pick it up and then I couldn't stop thinking about it because I was looking for a really unique interesting murder mystery and as it turns out this is a murder mystery within a murder mystery, which is pretty badass. The story is about an editor named Susan who is reading through the latest manuscript of one of her big name mystery authors and as the story begins we actually get to read that manuscript in its entirety as if we were her. And the more she reads the more she realizes there are things hidden in this manuscript that hint at an impending murder in real life. Then I got my July book of the month pick which was Good by Vitamin by Rachel Kong. The story is about a 30 year old woman who just called off her engagement to her fiance. She quit her job, she moved out of town, and now she's going back to live with her parents only to find out that her father has recently been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So there's a lot more going on at home than she originally thought and her parents could definitely use her help. I chose this one because I think it's going to be a very smart exploration of grief and gradual loss but I think it's also going to be about finding the humor in these tragic situations where it presents itself and how we have to laugh at the fact that life is inherently unstable and there's not a single thing we can do about it. Then I got Even This Page is White by Vivek Sharaya. This is a fantastic poetry collection I talked about in my July wrap up. I love it so much. It beautifully explores brownness, queerness, the feeling of being other, and what it means to make space for yourself. Even if you don't like poetry, please pick this up. Then because in July I finally read The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and loved it, of course I had to immediately pick up the sequel, A Close 
Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. I can't really summarize this one without spoiling the first book, but I will say that I hope this book doesn't stay on my shelf unread for as long as book one did because that was a great source of shame. Then of course I pre-ordered The Stone Sky by my queen N.K. Jemisin. This is the tremendous conclusion to the Broken Earth trilogy which begin with the fifth season and all I can say is that I am still reeling. It is the story we need, it is the story we deserve, and it is in every imaginable way perfect. These next few books I don't want to talk too much about because I will be reviewing them relatively soon in my upcoming September wrap-up. The first book I did mention in my Hispanic Heritage Month TBR sampler and that is The Epic Fail of Arturo Zamora by Pablo Cartaya. This is a really awesome own voices middle grade story about a kid named Arturo whose family restaurant could be torn down to make room for a really huge corporate commercial building, so it's about the summer he discovers the power of poetry and protest. Then we have Signal to Noise by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is again own voice Voices. It's about 1980s Mexico City and a group of teenagers who discover that if they play certain records with a certain kind of intent in mind, they can unleash unwieldy magic. And the third book is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. This is a classic piece of Hispanic literature. It's about this young girl named Esperanza Cordero whose family moves into this kind of crappy house on Mango Street. And not only is it a really great coming of age narrative that gives you a realistic look at the American dream, but it's also about the movements of this neighborhood, its people, and who stays and who goes. Then I got two own voices books about queer superheroes because yes. The first is Dreadnought by April Daniels. This is own voices trans sci-fi. It's about a character named Danny who's grown up in a world full of superheroes and one day this legendary superhero named Dreadnought dies right before her and as he dies he passes on his powers to her and as those powers take over they transform her so that her body actually matches her identity for the first time in her life. And while this is liberating, validating, and exciting it does put Danny in a very dangerous situation because not only does she have to figure out how to be a superhero, but she's also forced out of the closet and she has to face an onslaught of transphobia, transmisogyny, and all forms of abuse. This story seems like a really unique, interesting take on superheroes, but I do want to emphasize that it comes with very heavy triggers for self-harm, suicidal thoughts, possibly suicide attempts, definitely transphobia, transmisogyny, and explicit instances of abuse. On a much lighter note, the second one I got is Not Your Sidekick by C.B. Lee. I have nothing but love for this book. I talked about it a great deal in my June wrap-up and in fact the sequel Not Your Villain comes out on my birthday October 5th so I figured before I definitely get that one it would be a good idea to probably own this one as well. The next three books I got on their release because I have a problem and the first one is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is own voices queer Latinx fiction. It's about this world where there's a service called Deathcast and they call you and say you're going to die today and there's also an app called the Last Friends app which randomly connects you with people in your area who are also going to die that day so that you can spend your final hours with someone who understands what you're going through if you so choose. And basically it's about these two boys who meet in that way and I'm sure it's going to hurt. Then I have The Glass Town Game by Catherine M. Valente. This is a middle grade blend of historical fiction and fantasy. It's about the three Bronte sisters and how they invented this game called The Glass Town Game where their toy soldiers fight Napoleon and nobody dies. Then one day when Emily and Charlotte are supposed to be taken away to a boarding school, all three of them board this train that magically transports them to the glass town of their imaginations, but everything is wrong and off kilter and dangerous and it's nothing like the safe haven they wanted it to be. Then we have the book I'm possibly most excited for and that is The School for Good and Evil Quest for Glory by Soman Chenani. This is the fourth installment in the School for Good and Evil series, one of my favorite, favorite series in the entire world and because of spoilers there's not really much more I can say. This series puts a very clever, smart spin on fairy tales and how we should think of them. It's hilarious and thoughtful in fact, I'd say it's brilliant and I definitely recommend it. And then because I have no self-control, I bought the first two volumes of Boku no Hero Academia by Horikoshi Kohei. This is a really incredible manga series about superpowers. I talked about it a lot in my Get Graphic announcement and TBR, which once again will be linked down below. And this weekend, I would like to at least start volume one at this point. And again, to give you a better look at the covers, this is volume one. And you can clearly see two of my sons on volume two. And finally, the last book I have to show you is my September book of the month pick, and that is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Celeste Ng is the author of Everything I Never Told You, one of the most important books in my life, and I have been eagerly awaiting her sophomore release 
release ever since Everything I Never Told You came out in 2014. This seems like it could be another quiet suburban drama. There's something about this enigmatic artistic mother and daughter who move into this very prim and proper neighborhood. There's something about another family trying to adopt a Chinese American baby and how that incites a very unruly custody battle that rocks the entire neighborhood. I really have no idea and I don't think I'll be able to really summarize it until I read it, which hopefully will be sometime in 2017. Like I said, ridiculous. If you have any thoughts at all about any of the books I mentioned in this video, please feel free to share them in the comments below. But that is everything I had for this book haul today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the flip side of the page. Bye!